Hello everyone. So let's start uh, the lecture. So this is lecture nine. And uh, this is the topic for today. Uh, conditional probability based theorem. This is something I discussed in the last class and uh, we will do some problems on this. And um, yeah, some special problems also on this so-called Monty Hall problem. Um, so we stopped at the base theorem and uh, um, this is an example of um, application of base theorem. So we, as we know, um, usually we get a lot of spams, but uh, spam filters in the background do a lot of work for us. Um, if you see this graph, then you can uh, you can see that around um, 50% or half of the emails that we receive are spams. So we need a very good uh, spam filter. And to predict whether um, uh, an email is a spam uh, is essential to for the spam filter to work. OK, so uh, we can already see spam filters are so good now. So um, especially the one with the Google. OK, so let's see how to model this. Um, so we can easily calculate how many spam emails contain uh, DR for, and then if we model this using a probability, then uh, this is how it looks like. So given that a spam email is there, okay. So this um, conditional probability here, given that a spam email is there, what is the probability that uh, it will contain the word DR? Okay. So here by uh, here by dear we mean the word dear so that's uh, one way but we can also ask the other way um, what is the so this is the one that we need in uh, uh, that we need uh, in modeling and identifying the spam this is like more like a given statistical thing we can estimate this using some statistics so what we can do is like we can uh, gather all the spam emails okay and then um, calculate which of them had the deer in it and so, and, and so on uh, this is the other way of asking the problem so now you want to identify whether a, an, an email is a spam so then you need to know the the probability of an email being spam given that the word uh, is um, is dear in the in the email okay so you receive an email the word dear is there then what is the probability that you should flag this as, uh, as and what is the probability that email is spam and hence you can flag it as a spam okay so this is the probability based model um so let, let me okay so this is the base theorem that we recall from the um Oh, maybe I, I didn't uh, yet define it, so let me define it now. Base theorem, as I said, is nothing but applications of the conditional probability. And uh, what uh, it does, um, the most important part of the base theorem is these two, these two guys here, okay? So it relates um, probability of um, E given F to probability of f given e okay so this is the most important part in the base theorem that it relates these two conditionals okay so for in the email example we saw okay so uh, what is the probability of getting a dear given that the email was spam but sometimes we would uh, so statistically maybe it may be easy for you to identify probability that uh, um that the that the spam email contains the deer let us say okay and then but your actual goal is to find um, uh, probability of f given e um, in other words whether the email will be spam given that the deer was seen so so you it helps in the modeling okay so and modeling and which condition is easier for you to calculate so let us say this is easier for you to calculate then this can be estimated and given that you have also a knowledge of PF and PE, then uh, base theorem you apply 
and then you you can obtain the result here right so the proof of the base theorem is uh, rather simple you um, apply the conditional probability definition on p of e given f and p of f given e and you already see the common term is e intersection f e intersection uh, f intersection e which is same as e intersection f so the proof is rather simple by just writing down probability of e given f is probability of of e intersection f divided by probability of f similarly probability of f given e is probability of e or f intersection e or e intersection f f intersection e uh, given e is probability of f intersection e divided by probability of e so from here what we see common is these two these two guys are common okay so from here uh, we know that uh, this implies um, probability of f probability of e given f this is equal to so i send this guy here i send this guy here and equate it right so this is probability of e times probability of f given e f given e okay so from here uh, we can uh, calculate probability of um, probability of um, f given e is probability of e given f times probability of f divided by probability of e okay so this is what we needed so as you can see although the base theorem is very celebrated the um, uh, the the main statement is very easy to derive um, as long as you know the definition of the conditional uh, probability which is this one after that it's very one step in obtaining the base theorem so no big deal here um but this is a very powerful um, uh, theorem okay uh, some people say it's like one of the most important theorem in probability okay um for uh, and uh, indeed we uh, we are dealing with positive um, okay because we divide by uh, by probability of e or f so we assume in advance that probability of e and f are greater than 0 in other words we are only talking about events that have some um, some possibility of happening so probability uh, we will remove all those events so that makes sense right we will remove all those events that doesn't make that are not at all like, likely to happen so anyway we can remove those from sample space so so these uh, additional conditions are not really restrictive in any way so probability of um, f given e um, this is again uh, base theorem only but what we have done is that we have um, uh, replaced the denominator which was uh, earlier it was probability of e in the previous statement and we use the total probability now so probability of e is nothing but uh, probability of um, e given f so this is just total probability uh, uh, apply total probability on this the probability of e given this we did in the last class and probability of uh, f complement so this is what is is written here we just substitute that so it all depends on uh, what is easier for you to calculate for example if it is it, if it was not easier for you to calculate probability of e however these terms were given to you in the problem okay remember uh, here we never used any probability of e so if it so happens that probability of e is not really available to you but other things are easier for you like even the conditionals are easier for you to calculate then you can use this formula okay um okay now coming back to the spam emails let us see some concrete problems okay so let us look into the statistics of the um, of the emails which uh, are spam or non spam so let us say these are the facts that are given to us that 60% of all email in 2016 was a spam okay 60% of all email in 2016 was a spam 
20 percent of those spam uh, has the word dear in it one percent of the non-spam okay one percent of the of the non-spam has the word uh, dear also okay so so there are one percent of non-spam that has the word dear okay in reality maybe you can say that dear is so common like um, why only one percent but this is just an example here okay you can model based on some other keywords that you see in the spam emails usually we see some keywords in the spam email okay so we are not talking about so we have just picked one keyword for this example but in realistic scenario you may include some uh, uh, more relevant keywords that often show up so that's the statistics part okay so um so let us say this is the given um, information we have 60 percent of all emails is spam 20 percent of the spam has dear in it one percent of the non-spam also has the word dear in it okay so let us say you get an uh, spam email with the word dear in it now what is the probability that the email is going to turn out to be a spam okay so so that's the question now okay so in this case um this is a classic example of base theorem okay so but we need to model the problem uh, in a way that uh, we know what is given even in the, uh, in the in the conditional form because some of the things you see here are actually in the conditional form okay the this data if you see uh, you are 20 percent of the spam has the word dear in it right so you are already given a condition that spam is there okay so the spam so given that there is a, it's a spam email then 20 percent will be dear okay so these statements are in conditional form uh, already okay so now the question is like how we will uh, solve this problem and what are the events and what are the um how we are going to apply the base theorem okay this seems to be a classic case of the base theorem First step in every probability problem is to de define the events. So uh, events seem to be like there are two things going on in these statements. One is like appearance appearance of the word dear, and another thing is like whether something is a spam or not. So this tells us that we can start with the events that uh, that um, we find the word dear, and another event could be spam. Okay. So, so define uh, suitable events. So let us say, let E be the event. I, I'm writing it in a short form. Let E be the event that we, um, we detect a word here. Okay, and let F uh, be the event that the email is spam, okay? spam email okay uh, so these are the events that we defined and the question that we are asking is what we want really is um, probability of getting a, a probability that the email i received is spam given that it has the word dear in it right so then now it is um, now it is easy to to say what we are asking so we are asking um probability is spam given that the word year in it right? the probability of spam which is f given that the word year is in it which is e okay so sometimes e and f uh, often you will see e and f people use so e usually is like evidence and f stands for the fact sometimes people will use words like uh, h and e also like right? like hypothesis and evidence or something like this okay so um but it doesn't matter you can use any symbol as long as you understand the problem okay um and what is evidence and what is fact depends on what is the question being asked here okay if it was the other way like what is the probability that uh, it is uh, you get the word dear uh, given that it's spam then evidence becomes the spam and the fact uh, that you want to establish is the dear uh, okay so it depends in the context so um, 
from the base theorem, uh, from the base theorem, what do we have? Like we just write down base theorem just to see do we have anything from there. So from base theorem, what we know is that it, it gives me other way, right? So it, it gives me E given F. And the reason why it becomes interesting is that those statistical data is there in the in the given data, like 60% email is there and 20% of the spam has the word in it. So it seems one of those problem where um, the other way would be already there in uh, as a uh, as a data as an information that we am looking for. So nevertheless, what I want is probability of f given e is so from the base theorem. Uh, now we can write the base theorem allows us to to swap this. So e given f probability of f and divided by the probability of e. Right. So this is what we have. And uh, now the question is, although I have written it, like are these things known to me? Otherwise, it's still not an easy thing to apply. So probability of um, E given F, like uh, what does it mean in the in, in words, right? So probability of E given F, what does it mean if I write this in the word, right? So probability of um, of dear given that the email is a spam. OK, so the probability of dear word so is right in the quotes uh, given that email uh, is spam. OK, and so is this uh, something that is given to us? Um, you can uh, pause a bit and, and see from the given data, like is this something we are already given, right? So probability of the deer uh, given that the email is spam. So can we calculate this? OK, it turns out that it's there in the data itself. So probability of deer given that the email is spam is nothing but this percentage, 20% of the spam. So this will be the probability with which I will find dear. Yes, this percentage itself is the probability for me. So indeed, this is given to me. This will be like um, 0 0.2, right? It's 20%. Probability is always between 0 and 1, right? So, so in probability terms, it will be 0 0.2%. Uh, sorry, 0 0.2. And uh, <clears throat> okay, now what we are, what we need is probability of f. Okay, so probability of f. In e, so what does it mean in words? Uh, what is the probability of getting a uh, what is the probability of getting a spam out of all the emails? But that is already given to us. So this is like probability of F. OK, so that is like 60 percent. So 60 percent will be so probability of F 60 percent will be 0 0.6. OK, 0 0.6. And now um, another thing I need is probability of E. Probability of E is like um uh, how many um of the emails okay how many of the emails are um, has the has the word uh, dear in it okay how many of the um of the emails has the word dear in it so that where is there what is there in the data here So probability of E is how many of the email uh, has the word year in it. So that so that uh, will come from here. Uh, I'm thinking why it should have been all email here. Then I have to change the problem. Yeah, one like. This is not exactly probability because probability of E will be out of all the emails, how many contain the DA, right? This is not in, I mean, this is like given that it's a non spam, okay? Then the word, so that, that that's, on, so I can, like, we, we, we may be able to solve even this problem, but uh, we may have to end up using the total probability here, okay? 
So right now, if I want to use this in this form, I need P of E, but P of E will be, um, what is the probability out of all the emails? Because these probabilities are over all the emails, right? So what is the probability over all the emails that I get a DR, okay? So let us let me change this for the moment to 1% of all emails, okay? For the sake of this problem. And then, then this will be probability of E. Okay, then this will be probability of E. So out of, so what is the probability of E? Out of all the emails, what is the probability that it has the word year in it? Then I will take this as 1%. So probability of E will be zero. So this is 1%, right? So 0 0.01. Okay, and then I will use this. So to, for the, now the answer to this is probability of E given F and then probability of um, F and then divided by the probability of E. Okay, so if I plug, I plug in this, what do I get? Right. So it's like 0 0.2 and then uh, 0 0.6 and uh, probability of E um, yeah, there is something um, if you see here, right? Okay, the, it was like 10% uh, here. I'm sorry. Okay, so there, so I will take it at 10%. Otherwise, it will not. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Twenty percent of spam is. I mean, twenty percent. Yeah, I mean, twenty percent of spam itself is twelve percent of all emails, right? Twenty percent of the spam is. Uh, yeah. First two statements are contradiction of the third statement. First statement is a contradiction of the third First statement. First two statements. It gives twelve mm. percent of the spam emails uh, contains dear, mm. and the last statement says ten percent of all emails contains dear. So it's contradicting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Then yeah. yeah. Let me change this. It will be okay if it's non-spam. Non then it will be 13% of total. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to change this to a problem where I have um, um, probability of E, which is like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so let, so let us change this to um, to some valid number. So what could be a valid number that we can choose here? Probability uh, so that probability of E um, will make sense, right? So yeah, let me. Uh, I can uh, increase this to some some percentage, right? Like you said, like twenty percent of spam is already have this. So maybe I can make this like um, um, how much? Fifteen. Uh, sorry, twenty. Uh, like it should be more than twenty, right? Um, so it's like 25% or something, right? Because I'm talking about all emails, right? So I can change this to, let us say, 25%. Okay, so 25% of all emails has the word dear in it. Okay, so with that, uh, probability of E will be uh, 25 by 100. So it's like um, one fourth, right? So 0 0.25. Okay. Uh, I believe the problem, uh, the way the problem was, is we were actually, we could have used the total probability form and we we didn't need E um, here, but I'm changing this problem so that I can uh, use the E, but we can also, uh, we can also, uh, we should be able to do it uh, using other way, okay? But for this problem, let us say, I increase this to 25% of all email has dear, and then it doesn't contradict uh, the fact that 20% of the spam has, has dear. So now we can plug in the values here. So probability of E given F, and then uh, so probability of E given F is like uh, uh, 0 0.2 times uh, probability of F is 0 0.6, and divided by probability of E is 0 0.25. So this is one. But um, another um, maybe the original problem, the way it asked us is uh, so th this may the original problem can uh, we can also solve it, but then we may have to uh, expand this. 
and we may have to ask so so we can we may apply the total probability definition here and see if uh, it would be possible right so probably in the total probability will say tell us e given f probability of f plus probability of e given f complement and probability of f complement okay so um, it could be that the intention of the problem was um, maybe to use this because probability of e itself was not given to us um, so then we may have to ask so some of the things that we already know like this we already know probability of e given f we uh, we know probability of f uh, we know okay uh, now uh, probability of f complement will be just uh, 1 minus um, probability so this will be 0 0.4 this will be the probability of f complement so this we know now what we are looking for is uh, this guy right so probability of so what is the probability that we will get a deer uh, given that the email is a non spam okay exactly this fits in this de description okay so this will be now uh, corresponding to the original problem this will be 0.01% okay so we could uh, we could uh, solve this problem uh, using the total probability actually uh, because probability of e is explicitly not given to us okay so i leave this uh, up to you to 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 solve even the original problem using to replace the denominator by this total probability which this data is actually there with you okay okay um, so that was one example of uh, Bayes theorem um, and use of total prob probability. Now let us see some uh, other example as well, just to uh, make sure that we have a good practice. Like this will be one more. Um, <clears throat> so let us consider another example. So a test, let us say there are tests to identify some disease. Okay. So let us say there is a test which is 98% effective at detecting a disease. Okay, and so that will be like um, by effective we mean like uh, it's 98% uh, of the probability is there that uh, it will be a, uh, a true true positive. Okay, so but it may fail. Okay, so another way to say is that there is a 2% chance that it will falsely detect. Okay, so so however the test has a false positive uh, rate of 1%. Okay, so uh, so it may uh, so first thing is like uh, it has 90, uh, 90, 98 percent probability of detecting a, a disease uh, which is positive. Okay, so or or if it is if you go through the test and if it's positive, then it's your 98 percent likely that you have a disease. Okay, and uh, false positive. Um, uh, um, um, rate is like one percent, okay, and the zero point five percent of the population has the disease. What is the likelihood that you have the disease if you test positive? Okay, so these are all the information given to us. Let us uh, write down in a step by step manner what this is trying to say. Okay, so let us uh, write down the events in this case. So what are the things happening here? Like there, there is something about disease and there is something about uh, testing positive and testing negative. And uh, you, uh, you have the disease, so have disease and does not have, have disease. So these are the four uh, possibilities we are, uh, we have, okay. Um, so the events we can define is the following. So define events. So let E be the event that you test positive. Okay, so you test positive. And let F be the event that you actually have the disease. Actually have the disease this is like true positive case and obviously e complement and f complement is now evident uh, from here okay so i will not uh, write down again e complement or f complement 
<clears throat> so in this case, um, what we can write down is so-called uh, confusion matrix. So in the confusion matrix, what you do is the following. So if um, E and then uh, let us say you test positive and then F and then uh, and then uh, you have the disease and then we can write F complement um, and then so, so and so on. So let us write down this um, uh, this matrix. OK, so we have E. E complement and F and then F complement. Okay, so E uh, is like you test positive and you actually have the disease. So this is the case where you have the true positive. Okay, so probability of E uh, given F and here I can write this as probability of E given F complement and probability of E complement given F and probability of E complement given F complement. So this is the so-called uh, confusion matrix and uh, for problems like this we can um, we can write this matrix for uh, for uh, quickly calculating the, um, the results. So so what is um, what are these values that we are looking for, right? So true positive case is already given from the first line of the problem statement, which is 0 0.98. Okay, and false positive is explicitly given here, which is 1%. Okay, so false positive is 1%. So this comes out to be, so this is the false positive case. If F complement, which is you, don't have the disease but actually you were tested uh, positive so that is the case of false positive okay so that is like 0.01 percent right now we have uh, e complement f but e complement f can be taken from here so probability of e complement f is one minus probability of e given f okay if you want you can prove this i have not done this but this is a corollary of what we have done so far because the condition remains the same the condition remains the same f and f then you can do one minus of that so this will be uh, 0 0.2 per 0 0.02 okay this which is negative uh, one minus of this okay similarly here this will be one minus of the previous one, so which is 0 0.99. Okay. Now the uh, now we can look into the question: What is the likelihood you have the disease if you test positive? So what is the um, the event that we are looking for? You test positive, so that's that is like um, um, so. What is the likelihood that you have the disease? So you have the disease is like probability of F. You have the disease. And if you test positive, so it's like F given E. Okay. So this is what we are supposed to calculate F given E. So we can, uh, um, so F given is indeed not here in the table, okay? But we should be able to get it via base, uh, base theorem. What we have is the other way around, uh, but this is what why the base theorem is used uh, to, to get the other way, right? So the probability of F given E will be, um, um, will be uh, how much, right? So th that we can uh, calculate using the base theorem, which is probability of um, uh, e given F, okay, probability of F divided by probability of E. 
and probability of e you can expand uh, using the total probability so if you expand this using the total probability you will you will need this uh, um, these these uh, these terms here okay and so probability of e again like in the previous case probability of e will be uh, probability of of um, e given f probability of f plus probability of e given f complement probability of f complement okay so f complement can be found uh, as so f is given to you so uh, you uh, you have the disease right so 0.5% of the population actually have the disease so probability of f is this is given by so probability of f you know is uh, 0 0.05 so probability of the f complement also you will know now this guy is known probability of e given f complement is this guy and probability of e given f is this guy probability of f again is known okay so uh, the idea here is like you can calculate variety of things here right you one could have given you also something like this probability of f given e complement now probability of f given e complement is also not here here everything is e after f right e or e complement after f or f complement but if you are interested in things like this probability um, that you have the disease but you have tested uh, negative okay so that also you could have calculated in in that case you you will need the other other two values uh, from the table okay so it's just a matter of uh, plugging this uh, these values and obtaining the the concrete uh, result okay conditional probability and the game of chance so conditional probability um, obviously has a role so in game of chance and game of chance is a good uh, source of wide variety of um, of probability examples so let us see some uh, so let us see this uh, movie here where um, Now, behind one of the doors is a new car. Behind the other two, goats. Which door would you choose, Ben? Uh, door number one. Door number one. Ben chooses door number one. All right, now, the game show host, who was Ben? It's not audible. Hello. Okay. So I don't know if you are able to hear or not, but it should be possible to hear, I guess. Um, I did a test on this video and uh, did a recording in Microsoft Teams and it was able to capture the sound. Uh, if you don't, then I have a text description of this. In fact, I have another um, video uh, on this. So let me... Okay. Okay. It got stuck. I don't know what to do. That's the problem with videos. OK. 
Okay, so I have another uh, uh, illustration. So this is more like a graphical illustration. Um, let's see. Uh, sir, the video was audible in the beginning, and I think you reduced the volume. Ah, hello. What did you say? Hello. Sir, I think the audio was. I mean, uh, the video was audible in the beginning, and then you reduced the volume. Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, volume is still quite loud. I think, but I, I can increase the volume. That's not an issue. I think that's very minor. Uh, I think it's like ninety-four percent right now. Okay, so let me uh, rewind this and play it. Okay, so um, I hope you could um, you could hear this. Uh, it's quite loud in my end. Uh, um, so um, uh, to recap, okay, so I will uh, go to the next slide and I will recap what um, what uh, this um, uh, this is trying to trying to say. Okay, so in case you have not heard this, then I will uh, recap um, uh, what it is. Okay, so there is a game so and. Um, uh, in this game, so uh, the host uh, shows you three doors. Okay, so let us say there are um, three doors. So let us say there are three doors. Okay, so door one, door two, door three. And uh, there is a host. Okay, so you can think of a host, and then you are the are the player. So the host. Um, shows you three door initially and behind one of the door there is a car so behind one of the door there is a car and in the other two uh, there are goats okay the rules of the game uh, so are the following you are allowed to pick a door without opening okay without opening okay then the host opens a door okay remember that uh, the host knows um uh, knows which of the door has the goat okay so the so the host will always try to, uh, try to open um, a goat door okay because because he has the knowledge of where the goat is okay so so now the question is the host allows you to now change your your decision okay so the question is is it wise to 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 change your door okay so i can reformulate this because it went away so the door one, door two, door three, okay. So the stepwise, the way it goes is that you are allowed to pick one of the door, okay. So let us say you pick this door, okay, door number three. 
now the host knows where um, so uh, the, the, there are two goats and one car okay in one of the of the doors uh, you when you pick a door you were not shown what is behind okay so you are still waiting okay the door is not yet opened now the host will go ahead as a next step and open one of the two doors but the host actually knows which door has the goat so so the host will actually open the goat door let us say the host opens the, the goat door okay which is here okay so let us say the goat door a goat door he opens so that is something like it's sure that the host will actually open the goat door okay his idea is to avoid uh, opening the car um, okay um yeah let us assume that like if he opens the car then actually he has to give the car okay so he will avoid uh, doing that and he will open the goat door now now the question is so this is now revealed to you that door 1 has the goat okay two of the doors are not yet revealed to you okay you have you have made some choice but it's not yet opened okay the door is not yet opened so you're still now the host is telling you that if you want you can switch or you can stay okay it's up to you so there here comes the main uh, question should you should you switch from your previous choice anyway you don't know about two you did not know about even your first uh, choice which was three because that door was also not revealed to you now the question is is it worth uh, switching to to the other door than your previous door and it's a probability question right because it's undeterministic you don't know right uh, what if the door that you cho- chose in the beginning was a car itself right so definitely you will lose if you switch right but it could be other possibility that you may uh, have chosen the goat door actually and car actually you could have found by going to the other uh, uh, other door so that's the problem okay it's a little bit tricky problem and uh, many when this problem was was proposed uh, many uh, got stumped even those who had phd's in probability they they could not uh, solve this problem um, correctly okay so tell me your answer in the chat think about this problem uh, it's all uh, as i said intuition is the most important thing okay some people say rigor rigor but importance intuition powerful intuitions are very important so can you do you see any intuition with whatever probability we have studied and uh, even like conditional probability we have studied um, and so on like what does your intuition say what is the likelihood we are talking about likelihood okay these are not certain things so what do you think like would you recommend uh, changing or would you recommend uh, sticking and by recommending changing or sticking here it's all about like increasing your chances right it's the it's similar to the like the prisoner problem and and other probability problem we have seen it's about increasing your chances obviously you don't know you may fail with some probability but here the question is how can you increase your success rate right so what do you think right so i'm going to look into the chat uh, with um, uh, to see what uh, what are the suggestions you have okay okay so the chat i'm still waiting for the chat it's very slow so so switch uh, someone is saying switch always better switch uh, uh, always switch time lapse to open the door may be fine no time has nothing to do here okay time has nothing to do here um because yeah time has nothing to do so i um, use is saying it doesn't i think it doesn't matter like the so the intuition intuition suggests that um, right yeah it is also from brooklyn 99 yeah that's uh, if you are familiar with that tv series then that problem is also discussed there so megna is saying that and akash is saying that always uh, swapping is better okay always where swapping is better and akash is saying 1/3 to 2/3 yeah sai uh, sai womentala is saying um swapping has 
chance. So, 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 so Nikhil is saying, I'm confused. It will still have half of possibility. Um, yeah. So, that, so that's the question, right? Uh, it seems like if you come back to the to the slides, it seems like I'm still dealing with like one goat choosing between one goat and and possibly one car because no, not possibly, but out of these two, certainly one has car because the host will always reveal only the goat door, right? So it seems like you have a choice between a car and a goat. So it seems like you have 50 50. It seems like you have 50 50 because it seems like it's like a coin toss head or tail like should I switch or should I not switch. So that, that's why this problem becomes a little bit tricky. Okay, uh, really tricky with our intuition. Okay. There is an inherent uh, conditional um, probability involved here. But there is inherent conditional and the conditional probability involved comes from the fact that host host has revealed um, a good to you, okay? And that's why conditional probabilities uh, are a bit tricky business, okay, in, in probability. The fact that host has revealed a good to you, actually that changes the matter a lot, okay? So what I can do is that there is a very quick way, graphically, we can just look into this figure. And this is an exhaustive list, okay? Since this is a small problem, you can do an exhaustive calculation. So let us go through this. We have like uh, three minutes and then I will uh, show you some rigorous way to estimate this using conditional probability in the next class. But let us go through this, these exhaustive choices. Let us say your choice is the first door. Okay, so your choice is the first door. Okay, and it so happens that your choice of the first door itself had a car. Okay, this is one scenario and remaining two has the goat. Okay, that's the first case. Uh, okay. Now, uh, in the second stage, so this is the first stage, uh, uh, the host asks you to choose, you, cho you have chosen, uh, it turns out that you have chosen a car, but you still don't know. Okay, you don't know. Okay, but this is just the case that we are trying to enumerate. Then the host will open one of the, um, one of the goat doors. Let us say the host opens uh, this goat door. Okay. So this is the second step. Okay. And in the third step, let us say you switch. If you switch, okay, we are in this problem, we are saying that let us say what happens if we switch, okay, all the time, like always I will switch. So this is the case where I'm doing that. And the non-switch will be just a, a complement of that, right? Okay, so let us say I switched in the third step. The host asked me, do you want to switch? I said, yes. What happened to me? I lost because I got the goat after switching. The second scenario is that I choose the second door, okay? And we can fix the car, goat and goat like this because they, they don't have any much role because the way I am picking is bringing the randomness here, right? So that doesn't matter because we anyway, we don't know where is car and where is goat. So let us say car, goat and this are in the same place all the time. And <clears throat> I choose uh, door two okay? and uh, it is a goat. It is not yet revealed to me. The host goes and opens the goat door. So that is revealed to me. And now I switch because my, my strategy is to switch all the time. So if I switch, then I win. Okay, if I switch, then I win. Okay, so that's good. Another possibility is that I choose the third door. Okay, so another possibility is that I choose the third door and it has a goat in it host goes and reveals the other goat door. The host will always reveal the goat door, okay? Um, because if host opens a car, then maybe the user uh, will take the, I mean, by rule, let us say the user will get away with the car, but the host wants to minimize that loss. So host will again open the goat door only, and the, and the, and you will switch, and, and again you win, okay? So what does this tell us? This tell us that uh, that uh, when you switch, then two out of the three times, okay, the, your probability of, of winning is like two times you win and one times you lose, okay? And you can run this simulation also in the case when you, um, 
you don't switch okay Exhaust exhaustive uh, you can do okay it it will be like one minus of this but exhaustive also you can do let us say you don't um, you don't uh, switch right then then you win here in this case okay your strategy is not to switch then you win here um, you lose here okay and you lose here okay so the the probability of winning is like 1 over 3 okay so a uh, so uh, so since we are talking about probability there is nothing deterministic so your chances is increased if you switch which is 2 over 3 uh, rather than uh, 1 over 3 okay so that's the um, that's the answer to this and uh, as an additional thing i can also say that you can you can write the, you can make it make it tabular okay so for today we can stop here so like you could have also made this a tabular form it's similar to the graphical case i mean uh, so let us say case one is door you choose prize is in the door host will open either two or three because two or three has the goat what do you get out of that so you win if you stay then you win if you switch then you lose let us say door is in um, uh, the door you choose is still one uh, another possibility is that prize is in door two okay and the host will open door three okay because horse will not never open a car door because price is in the door and you have already chosen one so host has no other option but to choose three and in this case if you stay then you lose if you switch then you win so even in this all nine possible cases that you think of if you stay then you have like three over nine and if you switch okay then you have six over nine so this is this again comes out to be one over three and this again comes out to be two over three if you switch Okay, so that's a little bit of a counterintuitive, but uh, um, you can extend this problem uh, to more, let us say, 100 doors, and uh, one has a car, remaining has a goat, and you can see how the probability changes. If you do for more doors, you, uh, you get a more intuition on this problem. So with this, I will uh, stop, and uh, in the next class, I will, I will do it via conditional probability. The fact that the host opened the, the goat door, that condition changes. Uh, my, I mean, my strategy uh, is to switch uh, will be uh, will be a good a good option in this case. Okay, so mm -hmm. so that's the condition that the host is bringing that he he always opens the the goat uh, door. Okay, we will see this in detail in the next class. Okay, so with that I will uh, stop, and uh, yeah, that's all. So. Yeah, have a good day. Bye.